The diesel engine, named after Rudolf Diesel, is an internal combustion engine in which ignition of the fuel is caused by the elevated temperature of the air in the cylinder due to the mechanical compression, adiabatic compression. Thus, the diesel engine is a so-called compression ignition engine or short CI engine. This contrasts with engines using spark plug ignition of the air-fuel mixture, such as a petrol engine, gasoline engine, or a gas engine, using a gaseous fuel like natural gas or liquid by petroleum gas. Diesel engines work by compressing only the air. This increases the air temperature inside the cylinder to such a high degree that atomized diesel fuel injected into the combustion chamber ignites spontaneously. With the fuel being injected into the air just before combustion, the dispersion of the fuel is uneven. This is called a heterogeneous air-fuel mixture. The torque a diesel engine produces is controlled by manipulating the air-fuel ratio instead of throttling the iterate air. The diesel engine relies on altering the amount of fuel that is injected, and the air-fuel ratio is usually high. The diesel engine has the highest thermal efficiency, engine efficiency, of any practical internal or external combustion engine due to its very high expansion ratio and inherent lean burn which enables heat dissipation by the excess air. A small efficiency loss is also avoided compared with non-direct injection gasoline engines since unburned fuel is not present during valve overlap and therefore no fuel goes directly from the iterate slash injection to the exhaust. Low-speed diesel engines, as used in ships and other applications where overall engine weight is relatively unimportant, can reach effective efficiencies of up to 55%. Diesel engines may be designed as either two-stroke or four-stroke cycles. They were originally used as a more efficient replacement for stationary steam engines. Since the 1910s, they have been used in submarines and ships. Use in locomotives, trucks, heavy equipment and electricity generation plants followed later. In the 1930s, they slowly began to be used in a few automobiles. Since the 1970s, the use of diesel engines in larger on-road and off-road vehicles in the U.S. has increased. According to Conrad Reef, the EU average for diesel cars accounts for half of newly registered cars. The world's largest diesel engines put in service are 14 cylinder, two stroke watercraft diesel engines. They produce a peak power of almost 100 mW each. In 1878, Rudolf Diesel, who was a student at the Polytechnic in Munich, attended the lectures of Carl von Lind. Lind explained that steam engines are capable of converting just 6,110% of the heat energy into work, but that the Carnot cycle allows conversion of much more of the heat energy into work by means of isothermal change in condition. According to Diesel, this ignited the idea of creating a highly efficient engine that could work on the Carnot cycle. Diesel was also exposed to a fire piston, the traditional fire starter using rapid adiabatic compression principles which Lind had acquired from Southeast Asia. After several years of working on his ideas, Diesel published them in 1893 in the essay Theory and Construction of a Rational Heat Motor. Diesel was heavily criticized for his essay, but only if you found the mistake that he made. His rational heat motor was supposed to utilize a constant temperature cycle, with isothermal compression, that would require a much higher level of compression than that needed for compression ignition. Diesel's idea was to compress the air so tightly that the temperature of the air would exceed that of combustion. However, such an engine could never perform any usable work. In his 1892 U.S. patent, granted in 1895, number 542,846 Diesel describes the compression required for his cycle. Pure atmospheric air is compressed, according to curve 1, 2, to such a degree that, before ignition or combustion takes place, the highest pressure of the diagram and the highest temperature are obtained that is to say, the temperature at which the subsequent combustion has to take place, not the burning or igniting point. To make this more clear, let it be assumed that the subsequent combustion shall take place at a temperature of 700 degrees. Then in that case the initial pressure must be 64 atmospheres, or for 800 degrees centigrade the pressure must be 90 atmospheres, and so on. Into the air thus compressed is then gradually introduced from the exterior finely divided fuel, which ignites on introduction, since the air is at a temperature far above the igniting point of the fuel. The characteristic features of the cycle according to my present invention are therefore, increase of pressure and temperature up to the maximum, not by combustion, but prior to combustion by mechanical compression of air, and thereupon the subsequent performance of work without increase of pressure and temperature by gradual combustion during a prescribed part of the stroke determined by the cut oil. By June 1893, Diesel had realized his original cycle would not work and he adopted the constant pressure cycle. Diesel describes the cycle in his 1895 patent application. Notice that there is no longer a mention of compression temperatures exceeding the temperature of combustion. Now it is simply stated that the compression must be sufficient to trigger ignition. 1. 
In an internal combustion engine, the combination of a cylinder and piston constructed and arranged to compress air to a degree producing a temperature above the igniting point of the fuel, a supply for compressed air or gas, a fuel supply, a distributing valve for fuel, a passage from the air supplied at the cylinder in communication with the fuel distributing valve, an inlet to the cylinder in communication with the air supplied with the fuel valve, and a cut oil, substantially as described. CUS patent number 608845 filed 1895 slash granted 1898 in 1892, diesel received patents in Germany, Switzerland, the United Kingdom and the United States for method of an apparatus for converting heat into work. In 1894 and 1895, he filed patents in Edinburgh in various countries for his engine. The first patents were issued in Spain, no. 16,654, France, no. 243,531, and Belgium, no. 113,139, in December 1894, and in Germany, no. 86,633, in 1895 in the United States, no. 608,845, in 1898. Diesel was attacked and criticized over a time period of several years. Critics have claimed that Diesel never invented a new motor and that the invention of the diesel engine is fraud. Otto Kohler and Emil Capitan were two of the most prominent critics of Diesel's time. Kohler had published an essay in 1887 in which he describes an engine similar to the engine Diesel describes in his 1893 essay. Kohler figured that such an engine could not perform any work. Emil Capitan had built a petroleum engine with glow tube ignition in the early 1890s. He claimed against his own better judgment that his glow tube ignition engine worked the same way Diesel's engine did. His claims were unfounded and he lost a patent lawsuit against Diesel. Other engines, such as the Ackroyd engine and the Brayton engine, also use an operating cycle that is different from the Diesel engine cycle. Friedrichs Ash says that the Diesel engine is Diesel's very own work and that any Diesel myth is falsification of history.